let's go through the proportion study guide for this unit. All right, so in understanding proportional relationships, two quantities have a proportional relationship if the pair X and Y are equivalent. So to find if something is proportional, you have three methods. One, you can cross multiply and see if the answers are the same. You could find the unit rate and compare your answers. Or you could do mental math to, just, to see if two ratios are proportional. So for numbers one through three, we're going to choose one of these methods to see if our answers are proportional. Okay, so on the first one, why don't we cross uh, multiply? So we're going to cross multiply for this method and see if our answers are proportional. 3 times 12 is 36. 4 times 9 is 36. Those are proportional because you get the same answer. For number 2, let's cross multiply again. But to do that, what you're doing is 20 over 36 and 50 over 90. Make these ratios fractions. And then cross multiply. 20 and 90 make 1,800. 36 times 50 make 1,800. So again, these are proportional. Why don't we just try the same cross multiply method again. 10 to 32 as a fraction would be 10 over 32. 16 to 38 is 16 over 38. Let's cross multiply. And you get two different numbers here. So these are not proportional ratios. Number four and five, write a proportion for the following situations. All right, remember, when we're writing a proportion, after you write the words, you, that's when you're going to have two fractions set equal to each other, and then we go back and fill in with our numbers here. So let's do that in four and five. Actually, in number six as well. All right, so number four, you're going to have miles. So look, 15 miles, that's our first unit is represented by two inches. So we're going to do miles over inches in this problem. So let's write our proportion out. 15 miles over two inches. And we want to know if the distance is eight inches. Eight inches. Inches is a bottom, a denominator word. So we're going to put that eight on the bottom. We want to know how many miles in between these cities. Cross multiply to solve. Remember, this right here is our proportion, but to solve it, we still need to cross multiply. 15 times 8 is 120. Put your equal sign. 2 times x is 2x. Right here, we've got an equation. So, let's solve this. Divide both sides of your equation by 2, because it's the number in front of x. And you get 60 equals x. So our answer is 60. And what are we talking about? What unit is x? Miles. 60 miles. All right. Let's go to number five. There's a ratio of five black keys to seven white keys. All right. So I'm, normally we would stop and write black keys over white keys on an organ. But it's, I know that this problem, because I've already read it, it says write a proportion to determine how many black keys would appear on a pipe organ with a total of 240 keys. So we want to know black keys on the organ over total number of keys on the organ. The total would be the black plus the white number. Black plus white. All right, so let's write out a proportion. All right, originally, well, on the top of our proportion, we want black over total. Here's the black number, 5. Now, we need a total number. We don't just go ahead and say 7 because, look, 7 represents how many white keys they are. So to total, to find this number down here, we need to total 5 plus 7. And you get 12. Let's keep going in our problem. How many black keys 
this is what we're looking for, that's why we're putting the variable, with a total of 240 keys. So 240 is at the bottom. I put an orange box around our proportion just to make it clear to you guys what your actual proportion is. It's the two fractions. And let's go ahead and solve. 5 times 240 is 1,200. And remember, don't drop your equal sign. That's very important. That equals 12x. You get 100 equals x. 100 of what? 100x. Remember, x was going to represent our black keys. So it's 100 black keys. Okay. Number six, Jerry drove one third of an hour or 20 minutes to the store. And then in that time, he drove three miles. So let's talk about minutes and miles. Minutes over miles. Okay, so let's set up our proportion. 20 over 3. And he's going to continue that rate. And we're going to drive 26 miles. So that 26 is at the bottom, x at the top. Again, this that I'm putting a box around is your proportion. And I'm just pointing that out so that you will know that's the part you're solving. 20 times 26 is 520 equals 3x. Solve it. And you get... 173.3 repeating equals x. So what, again, what are we talking about? 173.3 repeating what things? Minutes. 173.3 repeating minutes. All right, the next problem, solve each proportion. For this, you should have gotten 57d equals 228. When you divide both sides by 57, you get D equals 4. The next problem, write this ratio as a fraction. So much easier when you do that because now you can see you can cross multiply and you get 19M equals 1140. Divide both sides by 19 and you get M equals 60. We're going to use the same method for C. Go ahead and convert this to fraction, or both of these to fractions. And now you have a proportion that you know how to solve. Multiply it out and you get 40x equals 1,040. Divide both sides by 40 and you get x equals 26. Number seven, write and solve a proportion for the following. So we're doing the same things like the two fractions. We're writing something like this. Okay? So on this problem, you're selling five pizzas for $60.50. So our two units are pizzas and money. Money over pizzas because we like for money to go in the numerator. All right? Let's write out our proportion. Five pizzas. Pizza is a number that we decided is going in the denominator. The money amount is going up top in the numerator. And we want to know what is the cost. That's what we're looking for. So there's our variable. If you order nine pizzas. Okay. So let's work this out. 5x equals 544.50. You're dividing both sides by 5, and you get x equal 108.90. And what are we talking about here? What unit? We're talking about money. So that is our answer. For 7b, we want, it's telling us the ratio of sugar cones to waffle cones. So sugar over waffle is 1 to 3. If there are 141 waffle cones, how 
how many sugar cones would be sold. For all multiply, 3 times x is 3x. 1 times 141 is 141. You're dividing both sides by 3 to get x equals 47. And what are we talking about? What, do, what does x represent? That's our sugar cones. Please get in the habit of putting a circle or a square around your answer. Makes it easier for you and me to know what you're telling me your answer is. All right. A teacher had 18 red pens. The ratio of red to blue was 3 to 5. How many did pens did she have in all? All right. So we know, we want to know, we know how many red pens there are, and we want to know how many in all there are. So the all, or the total, is our red plus our blue number. All right, so let's go back and look at the actual ratio they give you. The red to the blue was 3 to 5. This is your red. This is your blue. All right, so let's use our red number at the top of our fraction. Now, remember, at the denominator, we want the all. We want the red plus the blue number, so you have to add these numbers up to get this total for our non-ratio. Now, go back. The teacher had actually 18 red pens, and we want to know how many in all she has. That's your proportion. And when we set it up, we have 3x equals 144. You're dividing that by 3, and you get x equals 48. And what does that represent? 48 in all. 48 total red plus blue pins. Make sure you read the whole problem before you start working these. All right, D, the recipe for cup, cupcakes is this many cups of sugar for 12 servings. So we're talking about sugar over servings. All right, five sixths cups of sugar. Five sixths, if you work that out, gives you 0 0.83 repeating. So what that tells us is we need to keep this as a fraction because we don't want to work any of these problems with repeating decimals. All right, so 5 sixths of sugar gives you 12 servings. And we want to know how many cups of sugar, this is what we're looking for, if you have 25 servings. Okay, so let's work it out. Here's our proportion right here. We're going to cross multiply the 5 sixths into 25 first. Let's go over to the side and do that. 5 sixths times 25. That's the same thing as 25 over 1. When you do that, you get 125 over 6. And for now, I'm going to keep that in the improper fraction form. So I've got 125 over 6 equals... Cross multiply the other way, 12x. All right, at this point, you've got an equation. It's a one-step equation, and we know, just like we've done on all these proportions, that we just need to divide by this coefficient to be able to solve this. And that'll give us x equals whatever this is. So go over to the side and do 125 over 6 divided by 12. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a fraction because the, the first part is already a fraction. When you're dividing fractions, remember, keep, change, flip. 125 over 6 times 1 over 12 gives you 125 over 72. And let's go ahead and make our answer. You can keep it like that, but go ahead and make that a mixed number by doing long division. You get 1 and 53 over 72. Let me put that in a different color. 
you get 1 and 53 over 72 for your answer, and that is cups of sugar. It's a terrible, terrible, ugly answer, but that's what it is. Do not go back and change that to a decimal at this point. Keep it as a fraction. Okay, let's go to the next one. Emily can walk this much of a mile in this much of an hour. Hour. Mile over hour. All right, one and two thirds. I know that that's a repeating decimal, so I'm keeping that as a fraction. Over one fourth. Now, what if Emily walks five miles? How long will that take her? Write your answer as a fraction. Okay, just like we did in the last problem, here's our proportion, and let's just work it out fraction way. 1 and 2 thirds times x is 1 and 2 thirds x equals, all right, let's cross multiply the other way. 5, oops, 5 over 1 times 1 over 4 gives you 5 over 4 for this part of the answer. Okay, so go back and write that in. You've got 1 and 2 thirds x equals 5 fourths. Just like you would do in any other problem, you know that you're going to divide by this coefficient. You're going to divide both sides by 1 and 2 thirds, which is going to give you x equals whatever our answer is. But we need to go to the side and work that out. So 5 fourths divided by 1 and 2 thirds. 1 and 2 thirds as an improper fraction is 5 over 3. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 over 3. Keep, change, flip. So you have 5 fourths times 3 fifths gives you 15 over 20. We can simplify this to its final answer which is 3 fourths. And we're talking about hours here. So x equals three-fourths of an hour. Okay, the next one. We've got a textbook with literature and grammar in the ratio of three to two. But there's 150 pages in all. How many of the pages are literature? So we've got literature over all. And remember, the all is going to be the literature plus the grammar. All right, so let's do our little skeleton of a proportion, and let's go back and find our literature and our all numbers. All right, so our literature, go back to this first ratio. This right here is literature. That is grammar. Literature is three, but we, we don't want just the grammar. We want the all. We want the literature plus grammar, so all together, 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, if there are 150 pages in all, how many are literature? That is your proportion, so go ahead and multiply this out. 450 equals 5x. You're dividing by 5, and so you get 90 equals x, which means 90 literature pages. 90 pages in the book are literature. All right. Uh, Brian's having a party. Kroger has a party tray with three and a half pounds of deli meat. Three and a half deli meat will feed 25 people. But he wants to invite 40 people. How many trays will he need? All right. So we're talking about pounds over people. Three and a half pounds is 3.5 over 25 people. But he wants to invite 40 people, so we put an X for pounds. All right, let's multiply this out. You get one, when we say 3.5 times 40, you get 140 equals 25 times X is 25X. Divide by 25, and you end up getting x equals 5.6 pounds. All right. So it's asking us, 
how many party trays will he need? Now remember, each tray is three and a half pounds. So if he buys one tray, that's 3.5 pounds. Is that enough to be, and that's how much he needs? No. All right, well, let's say two trays. Two trays would be 3.5 times 2, which gives you 7. Is that enough to feed that much? Yes. So you need two trays. He needs to order two trays. All right. Number eight, use the graph to answer the questions. Are the ratios proportional? Are these, is this graph proportional? Yes because it's straight and it goes through the origin, which is our zero, zero point. B, intercept the, in, sorry, inter, interpret the point 20 comma 30. What does it represent? 20 what's, 30 of what thing, okay? 20 comma 30, Start at the origin and you go over 20 and up 30. That's this point right here. 20 of what thing? Seed packets. And then 30, total number of plants. Okay. All right, for C, how many plants would Stacy have if she used 220 seed packets? All right, to answer this, you need to go back and find the unit rate, or we can use our equation. So remember, our equation is Y equals KX, where the K is our unit rate. Go, let's go find the unit rate real quick. Remember, the unit rate is y over x. So let's use this point right here. What's our y? 30 divided by our x, which is 20. Divide that out on your calculator and you get that the unit rate is 1.5. All right, so right here, we just found the unit rate is 1.5. So 1.5 and then how many seed packets is she trying to figure out? 220. So that's going in the place of our X because look, seed packets are our X and that's what we're talking about, 220 seed packets. Multiply that out, Y equals 1.5 times 220 and you get 330. Next, a cir uh, circle the graph that shows a proportional relationship. Remember, it needs to be straight and go through the origin. This is straight and goes through the origin, so that's a proportional graph. This is straight, but it doesn't go through the origin, so no. This is not straight, even though it touches the origin. All right, part B, write the equation for part A. All right, remember... We're writing the equation of y equals kx. So that means we need to go to the graph and figure out what our k is. Just like we did on the previous problem. To find the unit rate or to find the k, we take our y and we divide it by our x. All right, so when you're picking a point, you've got to pick a point that's at the corner of one of these grids. And then find your y that goes with that. So that's 1 divided by the x that goes with it, which is 2. And so our unit rate is 1 half. So this becomes y equals 1 half x. And if you wanted to put 0 0.5 instead of the fraction, you could do either of these answers. All right. Use the equation from part B to find the value of y if x equals 11. Here is our equation from part B. But what this question is saying, well, what if x, what if we actually know what x is and it's not just some random variable? What if we put 11 in the place of x right here? Okay, so it's saying to find y, we're going to take 1 half 
and multiply it by what we now know 11 is. All right, so again, to find y in your calculator, you're doing 1 half times 11, and you get 5.5 for that answer. All right, next problem. The graph shows a proportional relationship between tennis balls, what number of cans, sorry, and the total number of tennis balls. So here's our y, here's our x. What does the point 2, 6 represent? Now 2, 6, remember, that's if you go over 2 and you go up 6. That's this point right here. So we're talking about 2 number of cans, so 2 cans, And then the six represents the actual number of balls, six tennis balls. So go through and see, choose all that apply from your answer choices. Look at A, two, can, two cans or six balls, six cans, nope. Two tennis balls and six cans, no. We said two cans, hmm. D is also an option. And there's 12, well, we don't even know what that's called, so no. A and D. Number 11. The table in the graph show, dip, show the cost to buy DVDs at two different stores. All right, so we're comparing store A and store B. Store A gives us their information in a table. Store B gives us their information in a graph. And we want to know which store has the better deal on DVDs. And that's going to be based on which one has the smaller unit rate. So that means smaller unit rate. So that means we need to find the unit rate of this table, find the unit rate of this graph, and then compare them. So remember, to find the unit rate, when we see a table, we label our table and then go back and figure the unit rate. 6.30 divided by 2 all the way down gives you 3.15. 12.60 divided by 4 is 3.15. So the unit rate on this one is 3.15. Unit rate on store B. All right, remember the unit rate is found by saying y divided by x, just like we did in the table, but we just have to look at our graph and figure out our y and our x. So pick a point that's at the corner of one of these grids, and I'm using this point because this point has the actual numbers right out here for me. So there's my y divided by, here's my x. Divide that out and you get 3.2 or 3.20 since we're talking about money. All right, when I compare this unit rate and this unit rate, which one is smaller? Store A. All right, for the B part, how much money will Sheila save if she buys 20 DVDs at the store with the better deal? Okay, so at store A, at store A, remember her unit rate, or this store's unit rate was 3.15, and she wants to buy 20 DVDs. All right, so at store A, she's going to spend $63. At store B, the unit rate for store B was 3.20, and remember, she still wants to buy 20 DVDs. So let's see how much store B would charge us. So store B, 3.20 times 20 is, oh geez, sorry, 3.2 times 20 is $64. So how much money will she save if she goes with store A? She will save $1. Next, number 12, the graph shows a proportional relationship between miles and hours. What equation relates the distance y and the time x? Remember, when you write an equation, it's going to be in the form of y equals kx, 
only place you need an, uh, a number is in form of k. The k is your unit rate. To find that, we say y divided by x. Again, pick a point on this graph that's at one of the corners of these grids. Here's the point right here. The y with that is 15 divided by the x at that same point is 1. 15 divided by 1 is 15. Now, this is our unit rate, but we've got to go plug that in our equation. When we do, we get the equation y equals 15x. All right, last two questions. Graph the ratios and determine if they're proportional. All right, when you're graphing a point, remember the coordinate point or the ordered pair is x comma y. All right, so this first set of information right here would be 1 comma 3 and graph that. Start at your origin, go over 1, up 3. The next point you would say, or the next point on your table would be 2 comma 6. Start at your origin, go over 2, go up 6. The next one is 3 comma 9. And the final point is 4 comma 12, which actually is going to land right about here. I'm just kind of estimating that. And now we need to connect our dots and see if that's, start at the uh, origin and let's connect our dots and let's see if that's proportional. Yes, it is because that is a straight line that goes to the origin. Yes. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, same thing. We're going to graph our ordered pairs. This first one is 0, comma 0, which is at the origin. The next one would be 3, comma 6. So go over to the 3. Don't go over 1, 2, 3, because you've got to use these numbers right here to tell you like what the number line is worth in this problem. Right, so we're going over to 3 and then up to 6. Then we're going to go 9, comma 18. So we're going to go over to the 9. Here's the 9. And then we're going to go up to the 18. Right here. Finally, we're going to do this last point, which is we go all the way over to 21. And then we're going to go all the way up oops, to 27. Now, let's connect our dots and see if they go through the origin and they're a straight line. Uh, that's a problem. It's a straight line until we get to that. And then it kind of shoots off and goes a different way. So, whoops. No, this is not a proportional relationship. Finally, let me remind you to go over all your previous summative tests, like the mid-unit 2 test. If you, don't, if you study for this test, you need to study this study guide that we just went over and the mid-unit 2 test. And that is it.